The watertight bulkhead technology of Chinese junks was a hugely significant invention in maritime history. It revolutionized the safety of ocean navigation. The technology has been widely used in the building of traditional Chinese sailing vessels called junks. The watertight bulkhead is still used today as a fundamental safety feature in ocean navigation. Throughout history, it has saved the lives of countless sailors. This technology's history goes back over a thousand years, beginning during the Jin Dynasty. Song Dynasty era ships, salvaged in the 1970s in the Quanzhou area of Fujian province, are evidence that the technology was being widely used in the 12th century. It also safeguarded the ships and crews, which made up the world famous Zheng He fleet during its voyage in 1405. The watertight bulkhead technology of Chinese junks is a traditional manual skill. Using camphor, pine and fir timber as the raw material, techniques such as rabbiting and caulking are used to install the bulkheads. Consequently, each compartment becomes independent and watertight. This not only reduces the risk of water leaks affecting the entire ship, but also increases the sturdiness of the vessel. The process has to be carried out by a grand master, someone who possesses the core technology, working alongside a number of other craftsmen. Such an invention was an enormous contribution by Chinese shipbuilders to a global industry. The watertight compartment is also known as a safety compartment. The bulkheads divide a cabin into a number of watertight compartments. Even if one or two of the compartments are damaged, the others will remain watertight to keep the ship afloat. The bulkheads are rabbit jointed tightly to the hull to solidify the ship's structure. The design of these compartments also lends them well to the storage of different types of goods. The core technologies of this process are rabbiting and caulking. The rabbit jointing technology provides a sturdy construction framework, while the caulking technology uses oakum, lime and tongue oil to fill in any cracks and provide a watertight seal. Grandmasters use traditional Chinese woodcraft tools such as the Lu Ban Chu, the carpenter's ink marker, the axe, the chisel, the hand drill, the mace, and the saw. With these ancient tools, they continue to manifest the creativity of the human race by improving on traditional technology to meet the various needs of ships from time to time. To this day, in areas such as Shanhu in Jinjiang City, and Zhangwan in Ningde city, both in Fujian province, communities and individuals are still passing on and inheriting the technology. Craftsmen such as Chen Fangcai, Liu Xixiu and Liu Jiawei still build ships for a living. Their exquisite techniques are greatly admired and they are regarded as grand masters by the locals. The technology for building watertight bulkheads has all the characteristics of traditional manual workmanship, passed down by word of mouth from master to students and through generations of the same family. It is also associated with other traditional practices, including the worship of the deity Mazu, the commencement ceremony and the dragon eye installation ceremony. They are not only the holders of this cultural heritage, but also a major force in the local shipbuilding industry, playing significant roles in their practice of the technology. The watertight bulkhead technology incorporates the qualities of integrity, continuity and uniqueness characteristic of intangible cultural heritage. Watertight bulkhead Chinese junk served as homes for fishermen in coastal Fujian province and are widely renowned as an icon of the area's local culture. 
Shenhu Harbor in Jinjiang City was once famous for its shipyards. In 2005, Grandmaster Chen Fang Tsai was assigned by a committee to reconstruct an ancient sailing vessel from the Ming Dynasty using traditional technology. The ship was divided into 13 watertight compartments. In February 2008, the sailing ship Princess Taiping set out from Xiamen in China. After a voyage of 10 months, it successfully reached the other side of the Pacific Ocean, arriving at San Francisco in the United States. During its journey, it was twice in grave danger of sinking, but it was the ancient technology of watertight compartments that saved the ship. The successful voyage of the Princess Taiping proves the successful transmission of the technology down through the ages and its continuing value today. At present, the original watertight bulkhead technology exists only in China's coastal Fujian province. Today, there are just three grandmasters left with a full understanding of the core technology involved and they have an average age of over 50. Due to progress and the rise in ocean-going cruising, wooden sailing ships have gradually been replaced by steel ships and usage of the original technology has greatly declined. Grand masters such as Chen Fang Tsai, who built the Princess Taiping, now only make model ships to earn a living. As a result of this situation, the ancient technology is not being passed on. As the old masters pass away, the technology which has been passed down for a thousand years is facing extinction. In order to remedy this, we have been working hard to implement the following measures. 1. Drafting and enacting a statute for the protection of ethnic and folk culture of Fujian province. 2. Actively applying the intangible cultural heritage designation to carefully protect this workmanship. 3. Using media to protect the inheritance of the technology, such as audio and video recording to document its transmission. 4. Setting up an ancient ship museum at Tsuenzhou Bay and a ship museum at the cultural centre of Shenhu Town, open to the public free of charge. In addition, we also plan to carry out the following procedures before 2012. 1. Creating a life and social insurance system covering inheritors and the transmission of the craft. 2. Conducting a comprehensive survey on watertight bulkhead technology and conserving the related information. 3. Organizing non-governmental institutes to train potential inheritors individually and in cooperation with vocational schools. 4. Spreading information on the craft to raise public awareness of it. 5. Holding a seminar primarily for inheritors of this craft to encourage further research and development. These measures should clearly improve the state of this ancient craft, bring about a renaissance of its practice and ensure its future sustainable development.